FM News Talk 97.1. On Demand Audio. You're listening to Almond in the Morning. Common Sense Radio. Good morning, you bunch of drunks. People are calling up Paige and saying that, <laughs> oh, it's a boy. If, if, they're, if, they're, if it's rack of lamb, they're boy. Well, actually, they were, it was not rack of lamb, but I totally get you. And, and Katie would tell me. So I did <laughs> finally ask her last night. I go, so did you later on? So were those for a guy? He goes, no, but I did make uh, a guy I've been talking to breaded pork chops last week. So she has been making food for another another guy. Uh-huh. In this particular instance, she was not. Although Katie, I'll tell you, those two porks, she, she can eat. So she's a gamer when it comes to eating. So she had she probably ate both of those lamb chops. <laughs> lamb <laughs> chops herself. <laughs> yeah. She's one of those uh, lean bodies that can eat anything, you know. Doesn't matter. All right. Lucky so, girl. Yeah, right. So here you go with the with the polling and Romney's interviewed by this reporter and I said at the top of the show and you might have just been be tuning in now but media malpractice you really do see it 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 screams out at me because I've been in the business and I know it pretty explicitly when I see it but for most people they don't really they don't really pick up on it uh they they haven't really studied the media very much. And so hopefully that's my benefit to you as as I hope there are many benefits to you listening in the show in the morning. But hopefully my benefit to you is one of them is a certain level of media criticism that you might not have thought about before. But now you notice it when you're watching these shows and seeing what's going on here. This is a, a great example here. Mitt Romney interviewed about the latest poll numbers, some in swing states. Here you go. Romney trailing President Obama by 10 points here in Ohio, down by nine points in Florida. And just before we came on the air tonight, we asked the governor about those numbers. I'm curious what you would say to some of your supporters tonight, your donors who might be concerned that this could be slipping away. Pause well, that for a second. If you look at the numbers, how anybody could come to the conclusion that the race is slipping away from Mitt Romney is beyond me. And you only have to be a person who actually is supportive of Obama to come to that conclusion. And yeah, people who support Romney, are they always going to deny something slipping away? Of course they will. But even when you, if you look at the numbers, how anybody could come to any kind of conclusion where they're going to ask a question about it is beyond me. Now, you can ask Romney, are you concerned about the poll numbers in the swing states showing you sometimes behind like five percentage points and be more precise about it? But the idea that somehow you get to a point where you're asking a candidate, a presidential candidate, whether he sees the race slipping away, that's pushing it. That's pushing a story. That's pushing a point of view there. More. Well, I'm very pleased with some polls, less so with other polls. But frankly, at this early stage, polls go up, polls go down. There are some who believe that these polls are just now a reflection of that videotape last week. Pause it for a second. Okay, so so now th- this is yesterday, okay? So now, of course, they have the uh, the excuse to bring the tape up again that pretty much everybody has forgotten about, except, of course, the people trying to make sure Romney doesn't win. Everybody else has the tape is meaningless at this point. And we've already talked about it. We already talked about what he meant. And, you know, we already talked about all the numbers. Nobody cares anymore about the videotape, except for the people wanting to pursue an agenda. And in this case, this reporter and the news media in general are always looking for ways to pop the, the damn video up again. You know, they, they will, they, they've yet to show this video because I guess they're authenticating it still. The video of Obama admitting he's a commie back in 1998. But they they won't ever show that that tape. But this tape, you just keep going on and on. And so it provides them with the loop, you know, so they can play it again in the story. And also, by the way, uh, the reporter uses the ubiquitous some say line. And you guys know from listening to the show, I've told you, and you know this by now, and when a reporter says some say, that usually means it's either the other side of their brain saying that, another reporter on the shuttle from the airport said that, somebody in their newsroom said that, 
somebody said that who is close to them. But when they say some say, if I'm a, if I'm Romney, I'm, I want him to tell me who that is. You know, if I were a politician and a reporter ever used the term some say, I would demand that they tell me who. Give me a name. Give me the name of one person. So in this case, if I'm Romney, I wish Romney and, – and again, you know, these guys are kind of – between a rock and a hard place on this. They can't really be uh, prickly with the media because the media will always say that they are uh, prickly. <laughs> they'll always say that they're crabby or they're scolding or they're this or that. They'll always add some pejorative statement to you know, a reasonable question by a politician when a politician pushes back. That'll always be viewed negatively by the reporters because they don't like to be talked back to. Reporters don't like to be talked back to. And because a lot of it is they, they, they have, first of all, they're imperious in many ways. And I don't usually ter- use this term very often, but they're bullies in other ways too because they know the kind of power they have. So anyway, if I'm Romney... And the reporter says, well, some say this could be because of the tent that's just now coming. I would say, who you who? Who says that? Who says my poll numbers are because of the tape? Who says that? And demand that the reporter tell you who says that. And don't let them get away with some say. Be precise. But he didn't. And he went ahead and answered the question. And it was typical, you know, Romney being nice type of stuff. And Coulter, on the other hand, doesn't really worry about being nice. Good for her as she tackles the uh, white liberal guilt infestation of MSNBC and NBC. And if I could just say about Chris Matthews, it's curious in that, that clip he cites all the black people coming up to him, then mm-hmm. cites black people in other countries whom he refers to as African Americans. That's because here in America, he doesn't have any black friends. He doesn't have any black neighbors. <laughs> his son, um, I have the URL in the book. There is a big picture of his, his son's wedding, 100 people in the church, not a black face in the group. Um, y- you know, any, any Republican with the facts of Chris Matthews' life would be convicted of racism in two seconds. He's a race, a race bean counter for every Tea Party, <laughs> every Republican gathering. He doesn't have any black friends. You have, for example, and I quote a whole series of introductions from Rachel Maddow of her very, very, very special black guest, Melissa Harris Lacewell. I mean, this is not a person that is comfortable around black people. Every introduction of a black guest is, you are wicked smart. You are so smart. You're the smartest. And then, you know, poor nerd white guest Chris Hayes, it's and now from the nation, Chris Hayes, good yeah, to see you. I, I love it. And and she's so right on about how well, we'll talk more about this because you can see it, and and the people who are more sensitive about blacks and those kind of things usually are the ones who are feeling guilty about their lack of association with blacks. We'll have more on that straight ahead.